This week on Mill Street, we travel to Crete to meet Mariana Leva Tataki, who gives us a tour of her island. She also cooks up her braised beef with figs and cabbage. Plus, we make another Cretan specialty, shrimp, orzo, and zucchini with ouzo and mint. So please stay tuned as we explore the cooking of Crete. Funding for this series was provided by the following. That meal. You sauteed, you seared, and you served. Cooking with all clad. Bonded cookware designed, engineered, and assembled in the USA for over 50 years. All clad for all your kitchen adventures. Today we're in Agia Kiriaki at almost the exact spot our family restaurant used to be for, you know, 30 odd years. It's my favorite view. I've spent every single evening of my childhood here. Coming back and being able to cook while seeing this is, is a special moment for me. And I'm super happy to show you this. What I'm going to cook is a really beautiful beef stew. And I usually serve it with this fast pickled salad. So I get my pot, carefully place it over medium heat and get a little bit of olive oil. And I'm just going to add the beef to brown it. In the meantime, I'm going to cut tomatoes up. Your recipe calls for a can of tomato but I'm going to use fresh tomatoes because they are amazing at the moment. So it's just a little change that I can't really resist. So just going over and dicing them. Okay, so tomatoes are chopped. I'm just gonna check the beef. Beef still needs a few minutes, so I'm just going to transfer my tomatoes into a bowl and continue with my figs. I've got really lovely dried figs that are from here, and I've also got some fresh ones. So yes, the recipe doesn't say use fresh figs. We are in Crete and the fig trees are overloaded at the moment, so I'm just going to do it. As a lover of good food and ingredients, I cannot not use a few red fi fresh figs in this recipe. So, very roughly chopped. As you can see, they're just absolutely amazing. They're like honey inside. I think they will add a really lovely texture and freshness and lift to our stew. I also have my dry figs because they add this really nice richness to the stew. And usually you would make it with dry figs. Figs are ready, tomatoes are ready, juniper berries are here. Last check on the beef. Almost there. So here we go. In with the tomatoes and we will follow with our figs and juniper berries. So I haven't got a mortar and pestle, so I'm just adding them whole and then they will give the flavour to my stew and I can remove them. I'm just going to top up with a little bit of water Salt and pepper before I put the lid on. And that's it. Ready, so we'll leave this a couple of hours, low heat, 
Be patient, let all those ingredients mingle, talk, and create an amazing flavor. We're going to make the quick pickled cabbage salad, which is delicious. I love grating uh, vegetables for salads because you create kind of very thinly grated vegetables, so your dressing really coats every bit of them perfectly. The texture is fantastic to just absorb all the flavors, especially when we do a fast pickled salad where you actually want that pickled flavor white wine vinegar in your recipe and that's fantastic. This is also sold here as white wine vinegar even though it's like rosé and it's a similar thing to what happens with our wine. So our white wine generally is more on the reddish side. So we're going to go in and be generous with the vinegar and then we're going to add some sugar, just some white sugar, normal, nothing special and we have salt and again just be generous because you want this salad to be punchy i don't tend to put too much black pepper here but you know you can put as much as you like so use your hands to mix this salad i know lots of people don't like doing this but it really makes a difference i'm happy I'm going to wash my hands and I'm going to come back and taste it. So time to taste. Mmm! It's delicious, it's amazing. The sugar's enough, the salt's enough. I'm really, really happy with it. I'm going to put it to one side and I'm going to add the mint leaves a bit later just so they stay lovely and green. Our stew is almost ready so maybe needs another half an hour so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to prepare the carrots so simply peel them and then we are going to cut them in half lengthways and then we're just on an angle slice them into pieces so carrots in the stew is smelling incredible. And that's it. So placing the lid on again, and I think we'll be eating in about half an hour. Let's have a look at the beef. Wow. It is looking incredible. There we go. The carrots are just cooked. The color is just, it's just phenomenal. And the smell is fantastic. Absolutely amazing. I'm just going to taste uh, the liquid because this is the best way to see whether you need to adjust any seasoning. So any more pepper or any more salt, you add it right at the end. Fantastic. I promise you, it's fantastic. Oh. This is my recipe of braised beef with dried figs and fast pickled cabbage salad. This is a very special place for me to cook and I hope you enjoy it and you love it as much as I do. So let's talk about some of the recipes. A prawn, an orzo dish. Yep. Phenomenal. And before we talk about the dish itself, you have some less than wonderful memories of prawns when you were a child. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, the, the prawns we used, uh, which we're very lucky to have 
found them are the small local prawns that right. you know come into season this time of year and they're only available for four to six weeks mm -hmm. so everyone has them the problem is that they are small mm -hmm. and they are quite hard to to handle so not if you've got one but imagine you've got 10 kilos of them or a pile of them in the same way that everyone wants to eat them during this time mm. of year my dad who's a fisherman and uses the freshest but i've never seen anyone be so fussy about what bait goes on his hooks it's the best stuff on the market mm. um there isn't something that's used for bait and not eaten by us you okay. know it's it's of just the best quality so same time of year he would bring about 30 kilos of these prawns in our kitchen and he would be clean them while all my friends were swimming <laughs> and I would get caught up in our kitchen peeling prawns for four hours and by the end of it, my poor hands would be just quite sore. <laughs> So, that was the bad experience of them, but, you know, there's been many good ones. And this dish that we cooked is, is quite amazing. So, what do I do? So, we'll just put the, um, the, shells, in the there? shells in here straight away. Since okay. we're cooking outdoors, we just have to be a bit more efficient. Okay. Um, so, shells in here, okay. flesh in here, and I'll show you how we do it. Okay. So you pull the head off. Head off. And you just follow, fr starting from the legs. OK. The, and just follow the body. Follow the body, pull the tail, done. Ah. OK, not so bad. Very yeah. easy. So this orzo dish mm -hmm. is one of my favourites. So mm -hmm. we use orzo, which okay. is a small type of pasta, almost okay. like similar to the shape of rice. Okay. And it's used very much here. And a traditional way to use it is to bake it in the oven with uh, lamb shanks. Oh, okay. Um, and it's delicious. Mm -hmm. But it has started being used in other recipes. So combining it with seafood or fish, creating something lighter. I've created this recipe because firstly I love using courgettes with mm -hmm. prawns I think they complement each other really really well mm -hmm. and then I use this also because texturally the dish becomes fantastic right. and also it becomes a bit more substantial mm -hmm. um, it so must you absorb a tremendous amount of flavor too we get these incredible prawns mm -hmm. which basically means their shells are going to be full of flavour. Their heads, okay. their brown meat, everything is going to be amazing. So you cook these shells quickly to make a stock and you don't even have to spend any time doing this. I'm going to get this stock on. All so right. initially, I'm just going to add a little bit of olive oil. OK. And a tiny bit of salt, very simple. <laughs> and I'm going to get them on kind of low heat. But you can almost drink the stock without doing anything else. Right. You, know, <laughs> you make a stock, you drink the stock, and that's enough. It's so lovely and mm -hmm. flavoursome and just smells of the sea. And then you use this stock to cook your orso. Mm -hmm. So, yes, the orso absorbs and cooks 100% oh, using this flavor. lovely... That's wonderful. So, and even though the flavours of the prawn and mm -hmm. the courgette are delicate, mm -hmm. they work really well together and the flavour comes from the stock, really. And also, you know, I finish it off with lots of freshly chopped mint, which is a really mm. Greek thing. So you get this fantastic aroma from from the fresh mint. And then, of course, I add a little bit of brandy <laughs> and I add a little bit of ouzo, which again are flavours that one will give the richness right. to a dish that has quite simple flavours. Mm -hmm. And the other one is almost like just making it the perfect dish for seafood, you know, having the ouzo and right, the aniseed. Right. So it's a dish I love. You can make it 100% vegetarian. You can use mussels or you can use tuna or salmon or, you know, whatever, whatever's available and is fresh and is good. You know, it's more like understanding the method. Right. And then you can be as creative as you like. Yamas. Yamas. Then yamas. We cheers to our health. Thank you.
So we're going to take one of Mariana's recipes and really try to bring out all the flavors that we can. We've got shrimp, orzo, we've got some zucchini, we've got some mint, and we've got some ouzo for some really lovely notes of star anise, and it really will bring out some of our ingredients. But first, we've got to talk about shrimp. In Crete, they were using pink prawns, and pink prawns aren't exactly easy to find. So here we have 21 to 25 count shrimp, and that means that there's roughly 21 to 25 shrimp per pound. So I've shelled a handful of these, and I wanna just start a shrimp stock. So with these shrimp shells, I'm going to crank up my heat just a little bit and add a tablespoon of oil to my pot. Don't need a ton here, but I want enough to get my shrimp shells bright and pink. So I'm gonna just toss them straight in here. If they're stacking up, it's okay. And then as they heat up, we're just going to stir them a couple times. So if you take a quick look at your shrimp shells, you should see that they are pink and that they've lost a good bit of the moisture. They're drying out a little bit. That's what you want. I'm going to add my aromatics. So we have some red bell pepper, we have a little bit of chopped onion, and we have some celery. And a couple of bay leaves too, just for flavor. And I'm just going to tip these right in. I'm also going to add just a little bit of salt, about a quarter teaspoon, not a ton. I'm going to stir it up again. We want to take it to just the point where our vegetables are sweating just a little bit. We don't want them wilted. We just want them letting off a little bit of their liquid inside. Once that happens, we are going to introduce some brandy into this stock. And we've got even a little bit of browning on the bottom here. And that's no reason to be nervous because browning is flavor. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to use some of this lovely brandy. It smells sweet, it smells lovely. And I'm going to use it to deglaze my pan and get all these little brown bits up. And I'm gonna cook it until it's almost gone. I've used my spoon to scrape up all the little brown bits on the bottom. So now it's time to add a whole bunch of water, about four cups. I'm gonna give it a quick stir, bring it up to a light boil, and then let it simmer for about 30 minutes. So it's been about 30 minutes and my stock has simmered down into this beautiful smelling liquid. So I'm going to use a fine mesh strainer over a big old cup and just pour this out. I wanna get every last little bit in there though. And I don't wanna lose any of the stock. So I'm going to press down on it just to get all the extra liquid out of the shrimp shells and the vegetables because all of this is really, really flavorful base for our orzo. You should have about three cups of liquid to cook your orzo in. And now I'm gonna prep my zucchini. So I have some small and medium-sized zucchini. I've already scooped the seeds out. And I'm just gonna cut these crosswise into little bitty slices. Zucchini's all prepped. I've got my tomatoes all chopped up. Now I'm gonna start building the base of my pasta. So I'm going to take about two tablespoons of oil here, and I'm gonna let it heat up until it's just shimmering. All right, so our oil's heated up. It's shimmering just a bit. I'm gonna add my orzo now, and I'm going to toss it to coat. All right, now that our orzo is all coated and toasting up, it's time to add the zucchini. And toss this just a little bit to get it working through. Then I'm gonna add my tomatoes. And this is the time that we're gonna add a little bit of fennel seeds for that beautiful flavor. 
toss it around a bit. And then I'm going to add about a half a teaspoon of salt just to get my vegetables sweating out. And a quarter teaspoon of pepper. There we go. I'm gonna toss this around until my vegetables start to let some of their moisture out. And then I'm going to essentially start building this like a risotto. I'm going to start with about a cup and a half of broth and stir it in until it absorbs. So this is gonna take about five or six minutes to absorb, and then we can add a little bit more broth, but let's let this go for a bit. All right, so it's been a couple minutes. This orzo has really beautifully absorbed a lot of my broth, and so I think it's time for our next broth addition. This time we're going to add just about a cup. We wanna leave a little bit for later. I'm gonna stir it up, same thing, stirring vigorously and making sure that we don't stick. And we're gonna cook this for about five or six minutes to make sure that the orzo is tender. All right, so this has been cooking for about six or seven minutes. It's still a little bit soupy, that's fine, but my orzo is nice and tender. So this is the time where I'm going to introduce the last of my broth. I'm only gonna put about a quarter cup in right now. So if you have a little bit left over, that's okay. Give it a little stir. And we're adding our shrimp in at the very end so they don't get overcooked. So I'm just gonna push these right in. I'm going to give them a little stir until they're cooked through. And there's some easy tricks to remember if your shrimp is cooked or not. C is cooked, O is overcooked. We wanna make sure that these guys get pink and beautiful and cooked through. It should only take about three minutes. All right, so my shrimp is cooked through. It's nice and opaque, lovely little C shape. So I'm going to take it off my heat and add our last ingredients. So we have a little lemon zest for brightness. I'm gonna stir that in. We are going to add some ouzo, and ouzo is a anise flavored liqueur, and it is really going to bring out the notes of fennel in this dish. I'm gonna season up just a little bit. And then I'm gonna add a little bit of pepper too. I really like black pepper. Okay. Give it another quick stir. All right, ready to plate up. That's a healthy bowl right there. Now we have to add our last star ingredient, the mint. Here we go. Look at that, it's beautiful and green. All right, here we go. Let's give it a try. There are so many beautiful, complex flavors going on in here. The ouzo really does highlight the fennel and the mint just adds such a lovely brightness. You can get this recipe and all of the recipes from this season of Milk Street at MilkStreetTV.com and uh, I hope you enjoy. Cheers. Funding for this series was provided by the following. That meal, you sauteed, you seared, and you served. Cooking with all clad. Bonded cookware designed, engineered, and assembled in the USA for over 50 years. All clad for all your kitchen adventures. Hey everybody, Christopher Kimball here at Milk Street and thanks for watching us on YouTube.
By the way, please subscribe to our channel and also click the bell for updates uh, as we roll out new shows. By the way, all the recipes from our current TV season are available for free at our website, which is 177milkstreet.com. That's 177milkstreet.com. Thanks and enjoy our shows.